Is it worth coming to Santorini during the winter? Your first thought might be probably not because the weather is not as great. Plus nearly everything is closed. And that's kind of true, yes. But, but prices, especially hotel prices, are so much lower, usually 50 to 70 percent, which is a massive difference. So for instance, if you want one of these famous hotels with the caldera view, in July prices start around 600 euros a night, but between November and March this can be 200 euros. So maybe coming to Santorini during the winter isn't that bad after all. All right, so first we'll talk about the weather, how cold or rainy does it get. Our second point will be how you can come to Santorini or there any planes and or ferries. Third point, hotels and restaurants how many are still open. Then number four, transportation or public buses as reliable as during the summer. And what about rental cars? Can you still find any? And finally, point number five and probably the most important of all, is there still anything to do on the island? All right, so point number one, the weather. Temperatures remain between 10 and 15 degrees throughout the entire winter. So it's definitely not super cold. Oh, and by the way, when I say winter, I mean from November to late March, which is technically fall and winter. But to keep it simple, I will call this entire period the winter. So as I said, it rarely goes below 10 degrees. So that's pretty enjoyable, but it's windy, even windier than during the summer. And that can sometimes be a bit tiring because you're spending the entire day walking and fighting the winds. Now, I'm not saying that every day is like this, but if you're coming here for, let's say, five days, count on the fact that at least two days will be annoyingly windy. And concerning rain, the average is four to five days of rain per month. So as you can see, the weather really isn't that bad. It's usually sunny, 15 degrees, only the wind can be a bit irritating. And now is the right time for me to bust one big myth about Santorini. Many of you who I've met on my tours have told me that they thought Santorini was shutting down in the winter because of bad weather. But no, that is not true. We close because you guys stop coming. And since every single job in Santorini is linked to tourism, if you guys aren't there, we're out. Many of us aren't from Santorini anyway, and we have families and friends to go back to, usually in Athens. So if there isn't enough money to be made here with tourism, we're leaving. And that's why we shut down, not because the weather is bad. Oh, and if you're wondering if the sea is swimmable during the winter, the temperature of the water is around 17 degrees, which is definitely a little chilly. But then again, I know many Greeks who keep on swimming in the sea throughout the entire winter. So just saying, don't discard entirely the possibility of going for a swim at some point. On a sunny and non-windy day, you might be tempted to go in. All right, second point, getting to Santorini. It's actually very easy because both planes and ferries are still operating on a daily basis, even though this is on a much lower frequency than during the summer. So instead of having five ferries per day from Athens, it's more like one. And by the way, it's only slow ferries which take eight hours. The fast ones, which take five hours, are not operating during the winter. Now, something very important to keep in mind is that ferries tend to get cancelled more often during the winter because of the windy and stormy conditions I mentioned earlier. So if you want to play it safe, book a plane rather than a ferry. And another very important point, it's a common thing that winter ferry schedules starting in November are only released mid-October, which is very late. So if you are traveling in November, don't be surprised not to find any ferries online until the very last minute. I know it's a pretty messed up system, but now at least you know, if you don't find any ferries to book for the winter, it just means the timetables haven't been published yet. So keep checking the websites until they appear. Now concerning planes, nearly all direct connections to other countries are suspended. So if you're coming from London, for instance, while during the summer you have multiple daily direct flights to Santorini, during the winter you will have to fly through Athens. And between Athens and Santorini, there are five to 10 flights a day. So it's pretty easy. All right, third point, hotels and restaurants. Same as for the planes and ferries. A few are open, but way less. For hotels, we go from over 1,000 of them in the summer to approximately 200, five times less. And I'm gonna leave you down below a few affiliate links for the best hotels, in my opinion, that remain open during the winter. As for restaurants, we go from around 700 during the summer to less than 
30 during the winter. That's not a lot. Here's a list of those which don't close, but this should be taken with a massive grain of salt because based on the mood of all these separate owners, this could easily change. So before showing up at one of these restaurants, make sure to give them a phone call or ask your hotel to do it. Now, is it a good thing or a bad thing that so many restaurants are closed? You might think at first that it's bad because you have less choice, but Think about this, that list you just saw, these places remain open for locals to come and eat. They don't stay open for tourists. There are not enough of you guys here in the winter to justify remaining open just for tourists. So that means that all the tourist trap restaurants have closed, which is awesome for you because wherever you go out to eat, you know it's gonna be a quality place. Now, on the con side, nearly all restaurants with the famous Caldera view will be closed. So if you had in mind to organize a romantic dinner in a fine dining restaurant on the cliffs, I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. Oh, and as long as we're talking about food, the majority of bakeries remain open. So if you wanna go get yourself some cheap spinach pies or anything else, that should be pretty easy. Next, we have transportation. How good are public buses? Well, the answer is so and so. They are still running, but instead of having one bus every 20 or 30 minutes, like in the summer, it's more like one every hour or every two hours. So it's not great. Also, they stop running much earlier around 8 p.m. instead of midnight during high season. Now, I can't give you the specific timetables because they keep changing, but I'm gonna leave you down below a link. This is the official website of Santorini's public transportation, so the timetables there are always up to date. Do not trust any other website you will find on Google, they are all wrong. Trust me, I've seen so many people eventually having to take a taxi because they trusted one of these websites. So if you don't want to end up spending 40 euros on a cab, only trust what you will see in that link. So all in all, is it a good idea to rely on buses in the winter in Santorini? I would say no, unless you're really on a budget. Because yeah, buses are obviously much cheaper than renting a car. Speaking of renting a car, yes, it is possible to find one even in the winter. And prices are substantially lower. Prices start at 40 euros per day instead of 60. However, be careful, only a handful of rentals remain open, all the others are closed. Now, I don't have a list for this, but you can ask your hotel, they will know. Taxis are still operating, but if you know my channel, you know they are very expensive. And that doesn't change during the winter. So if you don't mind driving, I really don't see why you wouldn't rent a car. All right, now here comes the most important point of all. What can you see or do in Santorini during the winter? Well, concerning the sightseeing of villages, nothing changes. You'll still be able to wander around in our super cute little towns. It's actually the best time of the year to do that because there will be way less people clogging up all the alleys. But don't be surprised if you're getting some ghost town vibes. Because yeah, with nearly all these tourist shops and restaurants closed, it does look a bit gloomy at times. Oh, and by the way, speaking of shops, know that all supermarkets remain open. Because, you know, there are still 15,000 locals living in Santorini and they need to eat. So even if there is no open restaurant in the neighborhood of your hotel, don't worry, you won't starve to death. You can still go and find some food in the supermarket or go to a bakery as mentioned before. So, sightseeing of villages is the first thing you can do. The second thing is the gorgeous hike from Firatu Ia, or the shorter version which is from Firatu i Merovigli. And hiking in the winter is actually so much nicer than under the burning summer sun. Now, if you plan to do this hike, make sure to check out this video where I explain step by step how not to get lost on the way. So, since the start of this video, it's all been pretty positive, right? Seems that it's great to come to Santorin during in the winter, right? Well, that's because I haven't talked about tours yet. So, here we go. From November to March, there are no volcano tours, no kayak tours, no scuba diving tours, no fishing tours, no ATV tours, no food tours, and no cooking classes. And that's a real bummer if you ask me, because these tours are so awesome. Now, it's not all negative, there are still a few tours operating. There are five of them to be more specific, and I'm gonna leave you some links down below in case you wanna book them. So tour number one, you can go on a catamaran tour, because yeah, luckily there is one company that remains open during the winter. Two, the archeological site of Akrotiri remains open. In case you don't know what it is, it's like Pompeii, but in Greece. So if you're into history, it's a very interesting one to visit. And if you're going, 
going, my advice would be to book a guide. Because if you just wander around on your own, you'll miss out on so many stories about what the eruption actually did to those people. Now, just so you know, these guides are not cheap, but if you're into history, totally worth it. And once again, I'll leave you down below a link to book one of these guides. Oh, and be careful during the winter, the archaeological site closes at 3.30 instead of 8. All right, the third tour is a private half-day tour where you're taken to all the highlights of the island by car. This is a very nice thing to do, especially if you're not staying for many days and you want to make the most out of it. Because in just five hours with someone who knows the island really well, you'll be able to see pretty much all of Santorini because distances are really short. Fourth activity, wine tours. Because yeah, the majority of wineries remain open. And fifth activity, photo shoots. If this is your honeymoon, for instance, and you'd really like to bring back home some amazing memories from Santorini, even during the winter, it's possible. All right, so in my opinion, all in all, is it worth coming to Santorini during the winter? Well, I would say yes, because the weather is still very decent, meaning it will be very enjoyable to stroll around Ia and other villages without the summer crowds, which for Santorini standards is pretty amazing. Plus, everything is so much cheaper during the winter. Hotels lower their prices, same for restaurants and car rentals, but of course you're missing out on all these fun tours. And if you're a little unlucky, you might have a couple of rain days here which would be a shame because there's nothing to do really in Santorini when it's raining so fingers crossed all right do you know where to find these spots because you've seen them online a thousand times but I'm sure it's not entirely clear in your head where exactly they are that's why I made those two videos this one is for the iconic spots in Ia and that one for Fira, Filostefani and Nimerovili and there you go hope you guys liked it see you in the next one bye